Welcome to the news, real estate news, where we bring you the actual article instead of just the title, the clickbait title. So I will start mine now. It's nice and quick, <laughs> right. right into yeah. it. Okay, let's go. Do we know what uh, episode it is? Nope. Number 40? Somewhere near there. Well, we brought the news, or at least I did last year, about Florida who banned people from China buying in Florida. There was a couple other states that were considering it. However, the U.S. appeals court has blocked Florida from enforcing the ban. So there were two deals that were going to contract and about to close when this actually stopped them from buying it. So there was actually uh, foreign nationals. That's what they called it. Foreign nationals. It wasn't just uh, regular citizens of China. So the Florida... Just China or anywhere? Uh, it was China and North Korea, Cuba, and there was two other countries. North Korea, they're having a lot of sales here? <laughs> they just have to put it on the list, I guess. I think Iran was on there as well. Iran, I should say. So there were lawmakers in Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, considering similar restrictions on Chinese citizens owning property. So anytime this was actually put in the real deal, uh, even though this is from NBC News, the comments were actually in favor of this. And they were in favor of it because they were driving up locals and they weren't able to buy the pricing. So I'm indifferent to it. I don't like when the government gets involved, but you know, I could see why some people would be against it. But it has been blocked by the U.S. appeals court, so it didn't go through. Boo-hoo. <laughs> Very well, story number two. I'm pretty indifferent on that as well, especially since it doesn't have anything to do with New York. But it would be really interesting if they did that in New York. Probably terrible. Well, they were trying it with the, the LLCs. Yeah. So they, that's like they a similar. They did pass something with the LLCs. Uh, not fully. They did some, you know. Anyway. Uh, first article is about prestigious homes in Manhattan and why they weren't, won't sell. Certain prestigious homes in these nice places, these super luxury co-op apartments are having trouble selling. Uh, really good. Uh, they actually called out Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers is having a very, very tough time selling her apartment on the Upper East Side. Uh, I love how they, they included they, one person. Yeah, they Joan got Rivers. the interviews from the agents and everything. And uh, there was a couple of good comments on, you know, that I was just an example. Joan Rivers, she's still alive? Maybe not. Okay. Maybe yeah. it was, it was uh, maybe it's her daughter. State. The yeah. state or something. I thought but, she died years ago. You know, the value seems to be there, but they have had a lot of trouble buying it uh, or selling it. And they gave an idea of why have these, uh, the why challenges? are certain co-ops like unsellable? Yeah. Do you have any idea of why they... It's hard to get in there? That was one of them. Old rules, yeah. tough requirements, and high maintenance. Uh, although some of the maintenance wasn't as bad, but you know you do have to be super wealthy to be able to afford it. A lot of you got to know people. A lot of them do need work, which yeah. also takes more uh, cooperation with the architects and the co-op board. Then there were some that you know uh, asking for post-closing liquidity requirements that were outrageous. Oh yeah. And then there was also uh, stale rules like no pets. <laughs> yep. No pia tears. So, yeah, they no went through a lot of like uh, really interesting things that, you know, are why certain co-ops are tough sells. But then also, you know, you should be able to get a better price for some of these. Yeah. But then you think about it, the co-op doesn't want to sell them at low rates. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh, tricky. I wonder if they're buying it for equity or they're buying it because it's the exclusive address. Most people, I think, are buying it for, well, that's the thing. Most potential buyers want things their way at yeah. that price. And they realize very quickly in New York that it's the co-op's way, not your way. Yeah. So the uh, post-closing, as Eric was talking about, I had a client, we went to a, a building on Fifth Avenue and they wanted two years liquid of the purchase price. The purchase price was right around $2 million, So they wanted $4 million liquid. Yeah. They, so they use an example after you close this. they yeah. use an example in this on a six million dollar apartment 10 million cash was not enough yeah uh post closing yeah so unbelievable cash not yeah. in assets so it's yeah. very interesting <laughs> what they uh what they require so this was a very big deal 
not like a big deal in the real estate world, but I thought it was. So the world's <laughs> real estate brokers large. Who's the the largest real estate broker brokerage? Would you say? Starts with a C and it's in commercial. CBRE. Hmm. So the largest commercial real estate brokerage is buying a company that services military databases or military databases, military bases and <laughs> hospitals. But it wasn't that it was more that they're buying it for more than one billion dollars. Hmm. And in an environment like this, that is insane, to be honest, like you're the largest brokerage. There's a lot of stress in the market and you're going out and you're purchasing a company. And the initial is $800 million in cash and then $250 million if they hit performance goals. And the reason is because I went to their stock and the because the, they're reporting earnings next week. So it's really interesting that they are announcing it this week. Hmm. So they're reporting earnings next week and they have uh, earnings call next week. Last quarter, their earnings fell 56%. So I'm even getting the chills thinking about the decision making to go out and purchase up to a billion dollars and 800 million in, uh, you know, commercial. It's amazing to even wrap your head around that they're doing this. Deal. I wonder how much money that brokerage made last year. Yeah. You know, how many, how much, you know, earnings did that company have? Cause they obviously are going to add on revenue to CBRE and obviously some earnings as well. So I wonder yeah. if they're they're going to, you know, transition a little out of the commercial or at least sell off or something. Does uh, the market like it? We'll, we'll see, see next next yeah. week. Stay, stay tuned. All right. That's a good one. Uh, we already talked about this article, so I'll make it quick. But there was a huge mega deal, $61 million at the Amman, which is a super high end luxury resort with residences right on 57th street billionaires row uh 21 of 26, beautiful building by the way uh yeah they Stunning spent building. years years and years making this you know one of those exclusive oasis for all the celebrities and high net worth individuals and this person bought their full floor apartment for 61 million there's i think five left well, so if you are interested, interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if you know anybody, send us a contact. They didn't list any of the homes, by the way. No, they just go straight all, to them. Yep. Yep. So here is one article that I have as a bonus, which Ooh, was just so funny, Eric, because uh, <laughs> it, I guess I, I don't know when this happened, but I think it was in the last couple of days. But there was a building in downtown L.A., two of them, high rise yep. luxury yep. that were being built. And there was a graffiti group of artists who went and spray painted the entire thing. So it is just covered in tags on these nice big windows yeah. right in downtown L.A. And it is unbelievable. The I renderings mean, of what it was going to be looked amazing. And it was prime area, I think. But now it looks terrible. Oh, it's all these big, I, you know. I saw a the, video of a girl that lived across the street, and it, it, I would not want to wake up to that. I can't believe that they were able to coordinate that. I mean, that's really that's a lot of stairs else. to go up too. You're talking yeah. about thirty to forty flights. Right. I guess they got on the. I've, clearly, I was thinking they like climbed on the outside of the building. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they did that. The you interior know, Maybe staircase. it's an inside job. Yeah. Maybe they, they did needed it. the insurance money yeah. or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that was crazy. Every single window covered in graffiti. I wonder what they're going to do with it because it's stalled. It's a stalled project. That's a lot of that's a lot of demolition yeah, to go know. through. I was to, wondering to bring if down you just uh, pretty pretty populated area. You, you obviously have to get all new windows. Yeah, because uh, it's all over the windows. But I was wondering if that'll be like the signature. Everyone will know that from the. Yeah, clearly they were having. Maybe some it goes up in price. Way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, welcome. It's art now. It's <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Imagine if it was someone famous. Well, the article headline, as you'll see, is vandalism or street art. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, that's not chat. GBT. L.A. Times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. thank you for uh, tuning in this week. Share, like, subscribe, leave comments below of any articles you want us to 
talk about and uh, joke about. And of course, as always, if you're looking to uh, buy or sell in New York City, contact form below and we'll talk to you next week.